into this message. I'm covering a very heavy subject today. So, amen. It is what it is. Amen. And somebody's not going to like it, but adamandbeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody say, a little leaven. Yeah, it's just, it is what it is. It is, it just is what it is. It is what it is. Um, and these are symbols, of course. See if I can do this. Yeah, there we go. That's fancy, ain't it? Every time I do it, I just start smiling. Annuit coeptus, we know the Noro Seclurum Annuit coeptus. This is the new order of the age. Uh, this is the, you know, these are Masonics, Masonic symbolism dating all the way back to pagan worship in Babylon. And we know uh, this is the symbol for Freemasonry. Now, let me tell you a little something about Freemasonry. They don't just embrace the God of the Bible, but they embrace all gods. So when you become a 33rd degree Mason, you have to pledge Lucifer as God. If you're going to be in any big business, big commerce, big anything, if you're going to blow up, then you have to be 33rd degree. Okay? This covers the gamut. Look, somebody's looking like in amazement. This, I've been teaching this stuff for years. Amen. I've been teaching. I got a video that shows where the, the birth of this, which was part eight, Lords of Discord. I'll show where this, this came from. Cain and Cain's lineage. Cain's line, Tubal Cain. I, 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 I explained all of that, all the symbolism, the birth of it, why it was created, what this lineage, this, you know, some people call it reptilian, but it's not really reptilian. It's blue blood. And I talked about how it came, how it got in Great Britain, how it got in the monarchy there, how it got in the kings there, how it's in all of these guys, and how all of our presidents are related, even the one y'all think is black. They're related because they share blue blood. I've been, I've been, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, somebody in here just shocked. And let me tell you something about that shock that's in you. Quit being shocked. You know, social media and television will turn you into a zombie. And somebody got to shake you and wake you up. Because you believe everything you see in. I just did an interview this past Thursday about that. I call it headline preachers. Preachers preaching the headline, believing the headline to the point to where they are confident enough to get up and preach it. You trust the media like that? You trust the news they're giving you? You talking about what preachers and stuff are doing because TMZ said it? You can't believe it. You can't believe it. Remember I showed y'all that video of all the news channels simultaneously repeating the same script? All of them. Even the ones that's against the others. Fox, CNN, all of them were repeating the exact same scripts. If you go back to my video, Truth Behind Hip Hop Part 6. No, no, not 6. 4. That's the one don't nobody talk about. Curse of the Culture. Remember that one? I, I showed you the media. I showed you who owned the media, Rupert Murdoch and all of that, how they, what, what, what they created it for. It was created to program this generation so that they will be void of truth. When I get up and preach truth, it's controversial. Why is truth con controversial? Because the lie is more prevalent. Amen. So yeah, we're in a pagan. I ain't trying to leave America now. Amen. Now, you know, I don't like I don't deal with the Masons like that. But I'd rather have them than some of these others out there. Amen. And I like our system a little better. Amen. But that don't mean that I'm getting behind these guys to the point to where I'm sharing the stage with them. Amen. I'm not sharing the stage. With a mason who has declared that Lucifer is God. If one of these guys called me tomorrow and said, I'd like to come and speak to your congregation. Guess what your pastor would tell them? No, thanks. Look at somebody. What? Hey, you can go to a church where they would open the door 
roll out the red carpet, hand them the mic, then put somebody on the organ and let them sing. But I just don't believe we line up that way. Now, if you want to talk about the Bible and the word, we can have that conversation. But I'm not presenting you to the congregation and you're a part of a secret order that's against the God that I serve. I love my God too much. I love what Jesus did too much. So I'm sorry I got to defy your secret order. I don't care who you are. See, y'all done forgot. Y'all forgot about the martyr Stephen. This was what Stephen did. Stephen had to stand before the, all the organized orders. And they were religious, political, everything. And what did he do? He preached the gospel today. The Bible said they start gnashing their teeth and covering their ears. Picked up stones and threw stones and destroyed this man. Because he stood up against the government. Was he out of order? No. Because heaven opened up and welcomed him in. Can I keep preaching in here? So I'm not out of order. Now, I'm not going to be disrespectful to any of them. But their place is not in the house of God. Amen. If you're a Freemason, and I don't care if it's your uncle who's a Prince Hall Mason, which that's bootleg anyway. Because he got the jacket, the hat, the ring, the shoes, the boots. Got the stickers on his car. Here. Ain't you supposed to be a secret society? <laughs> Brother, you wearing it like it's Ralph Lauren. <laughs> but this, this, these masons, that brings a curse upon your whole lineage. Your firstborn will be cursed because he that's the sacrifice whoever was born first they have a ritual in their ceremony where they sacrifice the firstborn use a doll to stand proxy as your firstborn child you got to give that child to lucifer why do they pledge for fame the same reason bglo's pledge same reason folks pledge delta sigma theta and alpha phi alpha and all of that for fame for for prominence to be somebody they pledge to a false God and then try to claim the true and living God. But my Bible says you cannot serve two masters. Not only can you not serve two masters, but you got to hate one of the two. Which one do you hate? The one you're not profiting from. I'm preaching in this house. I don't care. Man, I've been preaching like this since I was skinny. You know, I've been all kind of sizes. Hey, man, got video evidence. Look at somebody say, a little livid. All right. Amazing <laughs> grace. How sweet the sound that says Mr. President. Mr. President. These are your people. Give him a great big hand. The President of the United States. Mr. President. Thank you. Please sit down. Well, Bishop Ford, Mrs. Mason, Bishop Owens and Bishop Anderson, my bishops, Bishop Walker and Bishop Lindsay.
Nassau on December 21st, we took care of Joe Biden because he got his shot. He got his vaccine. He forgot. It shows you how unpainful that vaccine shot is. So everybody go get your shot. And you know what? I believe totally in your freedoms. I do. You got to do what you have to do. But I recommend take the vaccines. I did it. It's good. Take the vaccines. But you got no, that's OK. That's all right. You got your freedoms. But I happen to take the vaccine. Both the president and I are vaxxed. And uh, did you get the booster? Yes. I got it, too. I believe Roe v. Wade was right. I'm not supporting, we didn't, they didn't support abortion on demand. It was Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade was the decision. And a majority of Americans agreed. But then a year and a half ago, this, this Supreme Court, this Supreme Court, made an extreme decision overturning Roe with their Dobbs decision. As I made clear, we have to do what the Supreme Court decision in Dobbs would allow. And that is Congress must codify Roe v. Wade for all the states in America. Stop playing politics of the women's lives and freedom. Let doctors do their job. Let me say it again. Pass laws restoring the protection of Roe v. Wade for women in every state. That's what can be done under this, on the, even under the job decision. But under this court, that is going to be constitutional if we pass it nationwide. That's what I'm working for. I'm working for that law. And when they send me that law, I'm going to sign it immediately. Good evening. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That has to be really disheartening for you it is particularly as somebody who is in the streets trying to get them to pay attention listen i'm gonna tell you we have a black county executive in office we have a black mayor we have a black treasurer we have a black city attorney most of our common council is black the opportunity to really grow and develop is here you know disheartening is not the word it's heartbreaking Different black ministers are responding differently to this heartbreak, but all the preachers we spoke to said they're acting out of what they believe the Bible would have them do. If you read the Bible, there's politics in the Bible. The Reverend Al Sharpton leads the National Action Network, a social justice ministry connecting people of faith to activism. David was king. That's a political office. Joseph was governor. That's a political office. So where do we get this thing that, that you cannot be in the spirit of God and in politics. In Brooklyn, New York, Bishop Leah Daughtry stays active with the Democratic Party nationally. She ran two of its recent conventions, Denver and Philadelphia. The bishop leads the House of the Lord Churches, a Pentecostal network of churches with an Afrocentric focus. She says the party can supplement her religious advocacy, but not replace it. The Democratic Party is a tool. It's a means toward an end. It is not church. It's not designed to be church. They've got their objectives, and I have mine as a, as a faith leader. Sometimes they intersect. Sometimes we're striving for the same things. Sometimes we're not. And so when I size it up, I say the Democratic Party uh, better reflects, not perfectly, but better reflects my values as a Christian than the other party Example, does. Uh, Black Lives Matter is a stumbling block for the church mm. because it is the very first civil rights movement in the history of America that one did not come out of the church and two is not led by a religious figure. And what uh, my grandmother would put it this way, your slip is showing. Mm. is that <laughs> the black church has exposed that they don't know how to support what they don't lead. 
Uh, and so what the church has to do is really repackage itself, uh, is that uh, the black church is almost in leave it to beaver. Mm. So we see family as a husband and a wife and two kids and marginalized single parents um, because we don't have a terminology of how do I love God when I hate the church? Mm. Uh, and can I love him uh, without hating the politics of church? And so churches blew up in the pandemic and they're not doing their due diligence. Why? They grew up because we went virtual. So now I can go to church and I ain't got to worry about being judged by what I got on. Right. Now I can go to church uh, and you ain't going to judge me because of my tattoos, because of my piercings or because I have a same sex, same sex lover. Yes. Uh, so you got to ask yourself, why is the church not saying nothing about Brittany Garner? Right. Right. Yeah. They stuck in the same place because um, she's black and she's gay. OK. And what I said, I was in South Carolina two days ago. I said, I don't want to hear that argument. You can't support uh, Black Lives Matter because they were pushed by the LBGT community. Then why did you support the March on Washington? Mm. And listen, we're going to pause for just a moment. And I believe with all of my heart that God is all right with this, that God would have us to mix worship and justice and politics and legislation and I'm decreeing and declaring that folk who had no intention on voting for Raphael Warnock are going to get in the voting booth and the Spirit of God is going to arrest them. Can I get somebody else to decree it and declare it? That God is turning the hearts of people in the direction I ain't telling nobody who to vote for. I'm just telling you what I sense by the Spirit of God. Because I can't tell you who to vote for, but I can tell you what I believe. That people are going to get in the voting booth and their hearts are going to be turned towards God's man. I'm eventually set this moment for us to be punctually present in order to usher in a move of God that's going to transform the landscape of America. This election is not about Georgia. Oh God, this is a kingdom move that God's about to cause a shift in this nation, in this world, through the election of Senator Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder and say, neighbor, there's so much power in your praise that you can praise people into the Senate because the other side is scheming. We already heard that we need a prophet in politics. We already have a prophet in the Senate and we need to send him back. Amen. And in that Civil Rights Museum, they were looping his speech, I Have a Dream. And of course, I've heard that dream a thousand times just like you. And it's a very, very good speech, and King rocks his speech. But I heard something this time in this speech that I had not paid attention to. And I said, that, this is the poison pill. Dr. King said 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the Negro is still not free. Mm. That is a lie. I was born free. My freedom was given to me by God. Uh, he said that we come here to government to cash a promissory note that guarantees us our unalienable rights. That is a lie. My unalienable rights come from God, not government. John Locke says that they are irreversible, non-transferable, and unsellable. Any black preacher, and I'm going to say this to you definitively, any black preacher that supports the Democrat Party is an apostate. He is a false prophet, he is a liar, and he is a hypocrite. He supports abortion, he supports same-sex marriage, he supports kicking God out of the public square and out of public education. He supports the destruction of family. That means he is an apostate. And the condition of black America verifies what I'm saying. Some of you bring politics into the church. You think that politics is spiritual stuff. Politics is of this world. You think it's your duty to be political about this, that, and the other. No, your duty 
is to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Don't be talking to me about my spiritual responsibility to vote. I don't have a spiritual responsibility to vote. I have a civic privilege. Don't be telling me that voting is spiritual. See, that's what happens when you don't read and pray. When you don't read and pray, you, you say, wow, there's a Bible out now that includes the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Isn't that wonderful? No. Why are you in the church of God convincing people to adopt policies of people that have adopted Freemasonry. I'm not telling you not to vote. I'm not telling you none of that. I'm just saying the church of God is not the place for pagans. Period. So if you have pledged to a false God, you have no place taking the microphone in God's house. In the Old Testament, you would not have been allowed to do it. As a matter of fact, the leaders then would do things secretly. They would go find a prophet and meet with the prophet away from the people and see what the prophet said because the prophet carried weight in the Bible. But when prophets get in bed with political leaders, they don't carry weight anymore. Now they're following the ticket of that political leader. Before I even understood this, I was doing the truth behind hip hop at a church and there was a, our governor was there at the time and our governor was there in the audience and he did a speech and then he was supposed to be leaving and flying somewhere and he caught a little bit of me speaking. So he canceled where he had to go and stayed for the entire truth behind hip hop. Yeah, Texas governor. Stayed for the entire thing. Then he left and he came and told me, he said, man, I've never heard anything like that before. And I said, well, thank you. Uh, I don't even know how you referred to him, but I said, thank you. So he left. A few days later, I got a handwritten letter by him from his office asking me to be a part of his campaign to help inner city youth and, and the audience that I was speaking to to help influence them to go and vote for him. Now this is, I think I was on part two or one, yeah, two or three, something like that. This was early on. And so, you know, you get a handwritten letter from the, from the governor and you know some money coming with that job. And I looked at it and the Holy Spirit that's when he spoke, leaven of Herod. I had read this passage, beware of the leaven of Herod, and I didn't really understand what it meant until then. And so I had to contact his office and tell him, I respect you, but I have to humbly uh, pass on that request. Because I have to stay in the position now. Some folks will say, but you could have been in the position. No, I could have been in a position to help him. Right, 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 right. But my position is to help people find God. Right, right. That way they won't put their life in the hands of people. Right. Amen. Yeah. Now there's a fine line here. And I know folks are saying, so you preaching, don't vote. Now, I, I've never said any of that. You do what the Lord. See, if I can introduce you to the Lord and I can get you close enough to the Holy Spirit, he'll lead you. The Bible said he will lead you and guide you in what? Oh. oh. So if I do my job, you'll make the right decision. But my job is to not bring a political person into the house of God and side with them. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get into this word and then I'll be done. So Mark 8 and 14 starts off. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship 
with them more than one loaf. And Jesus charged them saying, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Just a little lie in what they're preaching. A little twist here and there. And it messes everything up. And then beware of the leaven of the political leader, Herod. And they reason among themselves. Now, if I'm with Jesus, y'all, you know, if I'm with Jesus, I'm never reasoning among myself. I'm, I'm just going to ask him if he's right there. But they wanted to look a certain way in front of him. Like, you picked the right guys. You really did. We can figure this out. <laughs> you with Jesus. Ask him. But instead, they are, hold on. Now, what did he mean by this? Oh, I know. He talking about because we don't have any bread. He, he's talking about we don't have bread. Um, yeah, that's what he's saying. So beware of their bread. Uh, that's, that's what he's saying. That, yeah, that's Mark 8 and 16. They reason among themselves saying, it is because we have no bread. And Jesus knew it. And he said unto them, why are you reasoning first? Stop doing that. And why are you reasoning? Because why are you thinking it's what I said has anything to do with bread? That is because we have no bread. Perceive ye not yet. You don't understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Like what's wrong with y'all? Having eyes see ye not. Having ears hear ye not. And do you not even remember? Are y'all crazy? I just took a fish. Uh, how many fish? Two fish and five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 and had a whole bunch left. And you worried about not bringing bread? I turned this ship into a big biscuit. I mean, I'm Jesus. What is wrong with y'all? He said, you don't remember when I broke the five loaves among 5,000 and how many baskets full of fragments you took up? And when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said seven. He said unto them, how is it that you just do not understand? And that is what is wrong with us right now as a people. They just don't understand. I can preach this message in front of them. And they don't understand. And here's the problem. Political leaders... When they're in charge, when you're around somebody that's in charge, you feel better about yourself. So people want these leaders to come in their church because it puts their church on the map as being special. Because this person is special. We're in a church, but if Megan the Stallion walked in here, a couple of men in here would probably faint in church. If she could get past security. <laughs> she had to get past security first. Yeah. Denzel Washington walk in here. You know, they think he's saved. Yeah. Pastor, now wait. I, I got a video right now of him preaching the straight <laughs> gospel. Yeah, but when a movie star or something, the celebrity, it brings something out. It, it just, you almost start gasping for air because their fame, it just takes the life out of you. And it, it makes you feel like you're around somebody special, somebody big. And that's what's happening when you have an inferiority complex about yourself or you're not close enough to God. People become too important to you. A little leaven. Just a little bit. Leaven is influence that modifies something or transforms it. So beware of the leaven of the political leader because he has influence that modifies or transforms. Y'all still with me? Herod was influential in politics and religion. And from Jesus' birth until his death, he sought to kill Jesus and stop his ministry. Y'all remember that? In the beginning, he tried to kill Jesus by having a, you know, he lied and said, oh, when y'all see him, tell me where he is so I can come and worship him. And he planned to kill him. Why did he want to kill him? Because he was going to take his influence. He already had his influence. People were more influenced by Jesus even before his birth because of the Bible, the Torah. And from Jesus' birth until his death, Herod sought to kill Jesus and stop his ministry. Politics will always try to stop Christ's teachings 
because Christ taught humility, but politics requires self-promotion and exaltation. Luke 13 and 31, the same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, go ye and tell that fox. Boy, Jesus ain't playing with you. Go tell that animal. He said, behold, I cast out devils and I do cures today and tomorrow and the third day I shall be perfected. In other words, you can't do nothing to me until I'm ready for you to. But Jesus called him a fox. That means we can call names. I'm just playing. I had a preacher tell me that. I'm just calling names because Jesus started this. Shut up. A little leaven affects the entire loaf and changes its appearance, texture, and consistency. This is what politics from the pulpit always does. It changes preachers, churches, and the members. Because a little leaven does what? Leaven it the whole lump. You know, they took clips of me talking about Obama. I think I said, not Obama, Trump. And I think I said, I like Trump. He this or that. I was joking around. They took that clip, made a whole clip out of it, and put it all over TikTok. Just watch G. Craig. He's talking. He's back in Trump. I got a whole video called Election Answers. They didn't post that one. They're definitely not going to post this one. No, because I, 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 you know, I'm not pushing any one of these guys. All I got to push is Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Amen. We have gone against the warning of Jesus Christ himself because we have adopted the idea that salvation may come from a political leader. We've forgotten that our salvation was already granted to us by a political leader, by the true king of all kings. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases and who redeemeth, what? Thy life from destruction. He's the one that redeems your life from destruction, not politics, not the political leader, not the president. Amen? Though the disciples forgot to take the bread with them, Jesus reminded them that he is their supply. When they lacked, they immediately took the spiritual sayings of Jesus naturally. They made a spiritual thing a carnal thing. This is where we are as a people today because we lack, we desire to mix the carnal with the spiritual. We are looking to a pagan government with antichrist political leadership for things that can only come from God. Our salvation, sustenance, and supply can only come from above. We are in the world, but not of the world. Many have been convinced that America is our land and salvation will come through the leader of it. Y'all, I hate to break the news to you. America is doomed. Now, this is, this is even worse. America was doomed from its inception. As soon as America was founded, wickedness started. When they built the White House, wickedness went on the walls. When they built the rotunda in Washington, they put nothing but false gods on the rotunda. Yeah, nothing but false gods and revelry. The Statue of Liberty is, this, is Athena, a false goddess. Yeah, everything about this country. Now, I ain't going nowhere. See, that's, that's the balance. You got to understand. I'm not <laughs> ain't going nowhere. I'm just letting you know you can't put your confidence in it. <clears throat> because it was, it was doomed to go this way. There was gays back then. They were just waiting for people to get carnal enough and stop praying to initiate their agenda. Enough immorality will lead to enough broken homes which will lead to a situation where the enemy can come in and take advantage of it. Yeah. Ricky Ricardo and Lucy couldn't even sleep in the same bed on TV 
And folks saw that and was like, ooh, see, things were more holy back then. No, Lu Lucy and Ricky wasn't holy. Ricky had a real problem. That was all TV allowed. People were still pledging to false gods. Musicians back then were still in the OTO. Yeah. Yes, sir. Following the teachings of Aleister Crowley. Pedophiles using the energy and the fortitude of little boys for fame. They were doing all that back then. Social media is just exposing it all because social media is in everybody's business. But it's been going on. It's been like that. But we used to pray and not just talk about it. We used to declare God's power over stuff. We used to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We used to actually fast and pray and exhibit the power of God. The church is the one that's different. Yeah, the, amen. We are looking to a pagan government for stuff that only God can give us. Second uh, Chronicles 7 to 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear them. And forgive their sins and heal their land. Man, but if my people, he's talking to his people, not America's people. Amen. I just need y'all to understand what I'm trying to teach y'all. Are y'all getting this? I know it's shocking. I know we, we just, you know, they, man, America's not in the Bible. It's just the land. The Bible has to be in us. Amen. We have to exhibit the kingdom of God on earth. America is a wicked country and is not the Israel of God. The people that believe upon the entire word of God and live for him are the true Jews whose kingdom is not of this world. Amen. Amen. Jesus spoke directly to Pilate, the political leader, and told him, that his kingdom is not of this world, so he doesn't need his influence. Yeah, the devil tempted Jesus, put him on a mountain, say, hey, I can give you all of this. It's like my, my kingdom is not, all, not on the world. I, I don't need all of this. My kingdom's not of this world. John 18 and 36, Jesus said, in answer, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, my disciples would have made a good fight to keep me out of the hand of the Jews. But my kingdom is not here. In other words, if this was my kingdom, <laughs> you'd be the one dying. Can I keep preaching? Is this message too much for you? Okay. Dominion theology, kingdom now theology, and restoration theology all teach that we should be in and of this world by voting in a political party that will change the laws and rules to reflect our Christian beliefs. But this principle is in opposition of what Jesus taught. We don't believe that a political party is going to make the change. We believe that people have to make the change. The problem is not laws the problem is immorality so if the leaders that are making better laws are still immoral what have you changed yeah y'all know they started this back in the day the seven mountain reclaiming the seven mountains and taking possession of the seven mountains the mountain of business, government, family, religion, media, education, entertainment. God's going to take all of those back before he return. Lie. Why does God need them? What does God need our media for? God need Disney. What does God need Twitter for? No, God's not taking any of those back. The world have corrupted them and God don't want them because his kingdom is what? It's not of this world. Right. Right. Romans 12 and 2. Be not. I mean this says everything. Be not what? Conformed. Conformed. 
but be ye what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. The kingdom of God is a countercultural movement that exists on earth, but is not of earth. We are here to win souls, not land. Amen. We don't win lands. We, li- we win souls. Souls live on lands and change the behavior of those lands, but you got to win the souls first. That's our job. Look at somebody and say, that's your job. Your job is to get folks saved. Amen. Ain't no building saved. We are here to win souls, not lands. We are here to be living, walking, breathing examples of Jesus' teachings, not mixers of politics and religion. God's true prophets never preach politics. I'm going to say that again. They never preach politics, but rather influence men to change their policies. That's what a prophet does. Yeah. Yeah. But now preachers are encouraging voting for this party or that party as if the right man in office would change things to better suit the believer. Psalms 12 and 8, the wicked walk on every side when what? The vilest men are exalted. And I pray for these leaders. Pray for Biden. Pray for whoever's coming next. Pray for them. But I don't need them to come here and preach. I need them to come sit down and hear me preach. Uh, Brother, I need you to watch some of my YouTube videos. I need you to get the truth of the word. You don't preach the truth. I'm the preacher. Amen? But we want to hear anything but the preacher. Can I keep going? This is the rotunda. This is the picture of the Capitol building, Zeus, and everybody frolicking and revelry. And you got the writers of the Constitution and all of them with pagan, mixed with pagan deities. Yeah, they've been believing that. That's what the tower is on your money. That's the, the, the tower of Babel. That's why it's not complete. And that's the third eye on top of it to complete it. That's the knowledge to complete the tower that God stopped. So that's what they're building. They're trying to rebuild what God stopped so man can rule. And man's going to rule To the point to where man is going to try to fight against Jesus Christ when he returns. That's why they're Freemasons. What are Masons? Builders. What are they building? The tower. Why are they building the tower? In defiance of God to show God you can't stop us. No, you can't preach here, bro, if that's what you signed up with. Ooh. Folk just looking like, wait a minute. This wasn't in my history class. I need to go get my history book back. It sure wasn't. Black folk wasn't in your history book either. But no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> we just going to get technical. I didn't see black people till I grew up a little bit. But <laughs> Freemasons built this country upon Antichrist and pagan gods, uh, Antichrist policy with a pagan god resolution in mind. This country is on its way to hell, and there is no redemption for the land. The redemption is for the individuals that accept Jesus Christ as their savior and choose his way rather than their own way. That's the only redemption that's coming. We should be looking for the kingdom that will come from above rather than trying to Christianize a pagan system. Amen. Yeah, it was better when prayer was in school. But if folks ain't getting saved, prayer don't need to be in school because they're going to be praying to everything. Go on and take it out. Take it out and then take your kids out. Hey, hey, 
Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I remember when I, when I was in eighth, seventh, eighth grade, we'd have prayer time, and only like one or two people have to leave: Ishmael and I. <laughs> Remember that? Y'all, Ishmael and Agatha, they have to, they have to leave. You give them time. They go out. You know, their heads was covered. They stood outside. And then after we finish praying, they come, come back in. Now, if you try to have prayer, well, somebody go get the sound bowl. Yeah. Be all kind of stuff they praying to. Light the candles. Oh, bring that doll over here. Yeah. Had a sage burning section. This is a crazy invocation. You don't want them to have prayer in school now. But this is where it was going all along. Hebrews 13. No, no, where did I stop? Yeah, this world is not our home, and we will never make it comfortable. Hebrews 13 and 14, for this world is not our home. We are looking forward to our city where? In heaven, which it hadn't come yet. It's yet to come. Amen. How many of you are looking forward to the city in heaven? Yeah, man. Summary. That didn't take long. Paul stated that if our hope is in this life, we are most miserable. Meaning if all you got is politics and your hope is in that and that's who you believe in going to change things for you, you're living a miserable life. Amen. Yes, I'd like to see certain people in office sometimes. I like some of their policies, this, that, this, all of that. But when they lose, I ain't broke up over it because I know God's hand is still on me and my life. And I know God is going to work it out for me and my family. Amen. Amen. I ain't going and start drinking because my political candidate lost. Our hope should be in Jesus Christ and him alone. He is our bread for today and hope for tomorrow. We are people of a different kingdom whose rules the world cannot understand. And whose establishments awaits a returning king. It's Herod's leaven that political parties are made of. And we as believers cannot be identified with them. See Herod was over the government and the church. He got so popular the church folks adopted him as a Christian leader. That's why Jesus said beware of that. Because I haven't called him. How did he get into churches? How did he get into synagogues? How did he start sending up burnt offerings and all of this kind of stuff? What is he doing doing that? Well, the people welcomed him in because of his status. We are people of a different kingdom whose rules the world cannot understand. It's Herod's leaven that political parties are made of and we as believers cannot be identified with them. Though they may seem conservative, there is always compromise mixed in somewhere. Though they may seem conservative, there is always compromise mixed in somewhere. I got to get up close to this because somebody's not listening. Though, I feel like Vanna White. Though they may seem conservative, there is always compromise mixed in somewhere. And all it takes is a little bit because a little leaven does what? When we vote for men that compromise, we compromise and belong to their movement. Period. This doesn't mean that we ignore politics. But our politics should adhere to God's policy. I mean to Christ's policies. We should do our best to be good citizens of this land. But never lose our identity as believers from another world. Yeah. That's why you can't come in here and preach Biden. We're from another world. You're not from our world. Amen. 
Somebody. In secular politics, there are three rules. Now, America's supposed to be the land of the free. So we're supposed to be able to be this way in the land of the free. But they're tired of us. They're tired of believers. So they want to stop the land of the free part so we won't be free to be believers. In secular politics, there are three rules. Get in power, stay in power, and then increase your power. In a system comprised of selfish ambition, the will of God cannot be fully carried out. That's what's wrong with the gospel music industry. It's a system comprised of selfish ambition. So the will of God cannot be fully carried out. Whenever man's selfish ambition is in the way, in order to come after Christ, you got to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. So selfish ambition always blocks the will of God. Pastors, preachers, ministers, etc. should avoid standing with political figures because of this. We should pray for them. Look at somebody and say, pray for them. Pray. What happened to prayer? Isn't prayer powerful? Yeah. Why, can't, why can't you just pray for them instead of having them preach at your church? Because if I bring them to my church, that means I'm the man. We should pray for them, but never get in bed with them. We should stand for what we believe, but never try to influence others to put their hope in ambitious men. Because the church has mirrored the world by electing mediators to speak to God for them. And that's the Catholic Church. Because of the politics of the Catholic Church, that's what started all of this, Constantine and appointing priests and different ones to be mediators where people can't talk to God. They have to talk to a man to get to God. Because, that, because of that model and the church mirrored that model and now you have men that are in churches that believe that they have to talk to God for you and you can't go to God yourself. So because the church has mirrored the world by electing mediators to speak to God for them, we see no harm in casting our hope in secular politicians. The believer's true government rests on the shoulders of our true leader, Jesus Christ. Is he your true leader? Is he your true leader? Isaiah 96 says, for unto us a child is born. Quit just reading this on Christmas. Read this during the election time. Unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. And the what? The what? The government, the government shall be upon what? His shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts is going to perform this. Everyone stand to your feet. Yeah, you don't have to clap. It was good. It was good. It was. It just goes against a lot of stuff, man. I know. We're in a different time now. And people are just, I mean, you would just sit and argue and argue. And I, I, I just, uh, quit arguing with stuff that you, that's on TV. At the end of the day, they all Masons. So even they, they may give you a couple of things you want, but they're going to give you a lot of stuff you don't want because they got to give everybody a little something that they want. So we pray for them. Amen? Amen. We pray for them. Let's do that now. Everyone bow your heads. We're just going to do that now. And I'm going to pray for each one of you. Come on up, elders. Pray for those that got family that gets into these arguments that don't understand. And you may have relatives that fought for the right to vote and all that. I don't know. And y'all get in arguments about this every time voting time comes and all that. If you want prayer just so you can be a little stronger in that area and you can say the right things and kind of keep issues down in your family, just come on up and we'll pray with you. 
with this prayer and then we'll pray for these men that will be elected in the office. It's a struggle sometimes, man. I know. Family don't understand. Amen. Especially if you say, I'm not going to vote. Oh, Lord, people died for the right to vote. Hey, people died for my right to vote or not vote. They go together. I hate people when, they, when you tell them, say, well, I don't know if I'm voting this time. Well, they just leave. Leave America. You leave. Then when I tell them the electoral college is a farce and it ain't real. So basically your vote don't count. What? What? <laughs> they don't talk to me, okay? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with my vote not counting. Because I know Jesus. Amen. And you know what? I'm okay. If they got the whole thing rigged, I mean, you know, they pick it. If every president is related, that means they know who to pick. That means we're really not picking. And if every year they only give us two choices, are you really picking? Don't come telling me it's a buffet and there's only one pan of chicken and one pan of ribs. That ain't no buffet. That ain't no selection. But you got to choose from these two. But it's your choice. No, it's not my choice if it's just two. That's not my choice. There has to be more so I can choose. <laughs> You're going to give me two choices and then say, it's your choice. You can pick. Y'all is so rigged. So get your feelings out of it. That's what we're going to pray right now. Come on, bow your head. Father God, help us. Help us, Lord, to get this world out of our systems get the spirit of the world out of us all of this get it out of us father god the influence the leaven of herod the leaven of the pharisees the leaven get it out father god out of our personal feelings disconnected from our ethnicity god make us colorblind Help us to stop seeing skin. Stop judging people and speaking to people the wrong way and thinking the wrong thing because of skin tones. Help us to see people the way you see them. Help us, God. Deliver us from it all. All the influence of the world. All the influences of social media. All the influence of the internet. All the influence of this election everything they're saying the bullying through cyber means to make us think that we are performing an injustice just because we want a better selection just because we want to trust and believe in Jesus Christ and believe in his policy and believe that he's going to make a way for us regardless of who's in office Help us to see this the way you see it, God. And Father God, we pray right now for those, since we are in this country, we pray for those that will be elected. Father God, that you can turn their hearts like you did many wicked kings in the Bible. The way you turn King Cyrus, the way you turn others in the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar, the way you made decisions through them Father God when your people was in bondage to them Father God turn the heart of these wicked pagan Freemasons who have pledged their souls to the enemy and God shine a light on them that maybe maybe there's a chance that they can see you for who you really are and that they can accept you for who you really are and that they will listen to the voice of your prophets that will speak nothing but truth untainted by political influences and father we just thank you lord for this message help us god help us lord to disavow ourselves of these feelings that social media and this election is putting upon us God that we will be able to walk in your truth regardless of what is said about us 
and we'll be able to stand tall knowing that we heard from you when we made our decision. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You may be seated.